Hi, welcome to Ask the Manager. Today we have Melissa Byrne with us. Melissa is a town meeting member for Precinct 6. Six. Mm -hmm. And in case anyone didn't know, yes, she is Kevin Byrne's daughter. <laughs> so, lucky gal. Um, so, welcome. And Melissa works for Veterans Inc. and she's retired Air Force. Mm -hmm. And you tell us about what you do for Veterans Inc. For Veterans Inc., uh, we're a large community, but I run the Women and Children's Transitional Housing, which means women veterans who have children and they're homeless, they need a place to start over. And that's what we do. And that's a hot topic today, isn't it? With all that's happening with the immigrants. and mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, as far as running shelters, mm -hmm. those are enormous shelters, mm -hmm. um, which they don't compare to what you do. No. And the people that come to your facility seem to probably have more of a home environment with with me. without cages oh yeah no cages no cages we have um, one bedrooms for the single women we have one bedrooms with cable with internet um, we t we take care of our veterans and then the mothers have two bedroom apartments and I will find them anything I can get them a lot of the community people in Shrewsbury will come and just give us stuff and it's great that's great it's an but interesting no interesting career it Yes, it is. And if anybody knows my father, they know it's an interesting career. <laughs> <laughs> but I think being raised, I, I'm not originally from Shrewsbury. Um, I did not come here till I was three. Mm. <laughs> so I can't, don't get to say I'm originally from Shrewsbury, but I think being a Shrewsbury resident, we got used to the neighborhood environments. We got used to leave your doors open, help other people, and that made a difference. And your mother was always involved, too. Absolutely, and for the old timers, they all remember the community shows that True. used to happen in Shrewsbury. The variety shows that everybody was in and everybody had a part in, and that's kind of how we grew up, and it was great. And you stayed involved yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. I have left Massachusetts, Shrewsbury and come back and left and come back and left, and now I'm back and, you know, in the same neighborhood that I grew up in. So it's... And how does Shrewsbury view, in your eyes, to everywhere you've been? Better. Uh, there's a community here, and I think if you leave and come back to a place, you realize that. There's a community. You can go to town hall and complain, praise. You have amazing Selco. Um, you know the places, and you know the people. And truly, the people don't change. They don't. They're exactly the same. Maybe the faces change, but the per personalities don't. Now I have one question for her. <laughs> Why do you never sit with your father at town meeting? You're usually across the aisle from him. Have you met my father? <laughs> of course I have. So that's your answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have your space. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, that was a great thing, and, and for people who know Kevin, um, he's raised his kids to be individuals. Um, We've called him Kevin since we were 18. Oh my. We are, there is no longer mom and dad in Virginia. And I, we don't agree on everything, so it's sometimes safer if parent and child are not together. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And he's Kevin. He is Kevin, everybody knows and Kevin. And he sits with a motley crew <laughs> oh on that side of the thing. You know, and I'm over, you know, See, and I'm going to have to start picking where I want to sit mm. yeah, at the next town meeting. Exactly. Because tonight's my last meeting with um, the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure if I'll sit where I used to sit before I became involved more than 30 years ago. Do you remember years. where you used to sit? I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. More than 30 years ago because the school people all sat in a different section than where they sit mm -hmm. now. And so we'll see. It's, it's very clicky at town meetings yeah. sometimes. It's like church. Everybody yeah. has their own section. Yes. You have so. the same people in the same section. I might have to jump around a, a bit to decide where I want to land. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's very political where you sit. Well, for me, it's always, it was always fun on the stage to watch. To I, I knew where to look to yeah. see where this person or that person <laughs> was sitting. Did they get here yet? You know, Roberta right. comes in at a distinct time, <laughs> et cetera. And so <laughs> you know where people will be. Absolutely. And that's, but that's the great thing about 
I still call Shrewsbury a small town, even though I think we're coming up towards city level. Um, it's the same, and that's comforting. And everybody doesn't have to agree on everything. People have different opinions, and that's okay. Sure. And as my father would say, they have the wrong opinion. No, she's teasing, teasing, teasing. teasing. Um, yeah, no, it's great. It's great. And, you know, I know there was a lot of discussion in my last town meeting of, you know, changing things and doing this and, and the, the pressing the buttons and things like that. And, you know, we're a community. We all know each other's opinions, but I'm also noticing the influx of new people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually driving here, I thought about it. How great that there's some 18-year-olds sitting in that audience. It's mm -hmm. really nice. And, you know, just to get them more motivated to and be part of this. It's refreshing to have um, new people mm -hmm. with different opinions or with the same opinions. It's just nice because it keeps us all on our toes. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, you know, can at least think about their perspective. And Absolutely. for me, remembering when my kids were in school, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, and, and as somebody who doesn't have kids in the school system, it at first it was difficult because, oh, we're going to talk about the school and things like that, but then you realize, even though I am just a dog owner, mm -hmm. I still have a say in what happens in the mm -hmm. school, and my opinion counts. Mm -hmm. um, I may not have somebody at Patton School, but, you know, my ideas count. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, the, the single people or the, the senior citizens in the town have really good ideas, mm -hmm. and it's a great forum. Mm -hmm. Great for him. Yeah. So what would, would you like to start with a question? Well, I think the most important question on my mind right now, and for you people that are out there, you don't know there's a dog under the table. Um, <laughs> there is a dog under the table. Yeah, he, is. he sound asleep, but that's okay. Um, there's been a lot of talk over the past couple of years is, you know, a dog park is part of a community. Mm -hmm. um, I think right now most of us either go to Northboro okay. or to Worcester. Mm -hmm. And not that Northboro is an overnight trip, but we notice that dog people, you know, they hang out together, they talk, they become community. And is there any chance we will ever have a dog park somewhere in the town of Shrewsbury in my lifetime? That's, that's a new one for you. That's a good question, yeah. <laughs> so I have two dogs mm -hmm. as well. So what kind? Uh, I have a golden retriever and then a terrier mix who is a rescue. They so dog yeah, so um, yeah, so I mean I certainly love dogs. I, and I think it, it is um, part of a um, a growing commonality mm -hmm. in a parks and recreation mm -hmm. and outdoor um, environment that people uh, can come together as a community. So mm -hmm. I, I certainly don't uh, I haven't talked about any definitive plans about mm -hmm. it, but I mean, I think there would be an opportunity as we look at our parks and outdoor spaces. And I think we've done a really good job over the past recent history, five years or so, um, if not longer, to acquire lands, mm -hmm. to preserve lands, uh, and maintain open space. But um, I think we may need to get into a little bit more planning of what we do with those spaces. Are they really just going to sit there and be woodlands, or, or are we going to uh, develop them into recreational venues? And um, I think dog parks would be on the list. And so if we had a dog park, would that make you want to move to Shrewsbury? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I couldn't resist. Wow. <laughs> I so thought the qu first question was hard. <laughs> wow. So, so, so where you live, do they have a dog park? No, not in the town. Not they can Starbucks. just run free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they run. They run around the yard. My dogs oh. do. Yeah. Do they stay in uh, your yard, yeah, or do they? they have oh, oh, they have the collars that make <laughs> them stay. I see. Actually, my younger one would be a, a you know she's a, afraid to go out on the porch sometimes, so she needs her big brother to go out there with her. So. I see. But uh, so he keeps the collar on, and she just doesn't. And <laughs> she just follows. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And that kind of leads into the next thing we were chatting about before this is the coyote. Oh yeah. The yeah. coyote. I know in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, I live in this down by Pat, and, and we do have a coyote and. Mm -hmm. She's been there, as far as I know, for years, mm -hmm. but I'm seeing maybe the rabies is starting to hit, mm -hmm. and the coyote problem is getting 
Mm -hmm. A little bit more dangerous. Yeah, there was the unfortunate event of last week or so that folks may have seen on the news uh, with the, the family on Surrey Lane that, that lost their uh, dog to a coyote and actually, you know, was witnessed. So, you know, it wasn't a guess. Um, and there is all that um, open space, preserved land behind the development and then out to 290 in, in that section. So mm -hmm. it is interesting that as we preserve these lands, um, and then don't use them at all. They become these little havens for wildlife. And uh, if you talk to folks that you know are a little bit older, whenever the lands were being mostly clear cut and everything, all those animals dispersed mm -hmm. and went away. And now they're finding their ways back mm -hmm. into these patches of woodlands. Um, it does it does cause concern with you know mice and uh, then the the um, ticks and everything that mm -hmm. come along with mm -hmm. it. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I'd certainly recommend everyone be a little more cautious mm -hmm. out there, especially if you do back up. Many people love the privilege of backing up the town-owned land yeah. and open space. And it's never going to be developed. It's a good thing, but it does create a little haven for wildlife that you know we often don't think about. So, um, it's an unfortunate event, you know, for that family, and mm -hmm. hopefully everyone just takes note. But and that was a small dog, but you have, have to also watch out for small children, right? Because other places yeah. in the state. Yeah, you don't want you them know. to get bit or anything. Right. Yeah, and we, you know, we did, we we had the animal control officer, uh, Leona Pease, went down there and um, spoke with folks in the neighborhood and things like that, just to make sure everyone was aware. Um, it's a it's a tough thing to manage. We do the best we can. And, you know, you, you talk about the, the, the dog by Patton, is it Patton? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know in speaking with the Chief Hester, Leona has been down there and yeah. on guard and making sure that, mm -hmm. you know, that coyote is when it's more active that everyone's safe, including it. So it's, it's a challenge. And that's the key word too. We've got to look at two sides, yeah. you know, yeah. we're taking their land, yep. you know, the poor thing, where's it going to go? Yep. So I, it's, it's a tough mm -hmm. barrier to do, but you want to keep your pets safe, your kids safe. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, never mind the ticks mm -hmm. and all that good stuff mm -hmm. and those wonderful caterpillars. Oh, oh. yes. I yeah, there's, it's interesting with the caterpillars. So I, I, most folks probably know I live in Sturbridge, and we were ravaged by the gypsy moth caterpillars for like the last three years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you sent them to us. And then yeah, hopefully they weren't on my bag when I came out. Said, oh, don't, don't start that. That's, a, that's, that's a bad where thing. they came from. That's a bad thing. We'll have to build a wall. Build a wall. <laughs> but but um, yeah, a lot of devastation. I know I have a, a large tree removal bill coming up in my future because mm. of a. Uh, of you know woods along the edge of our property line the trees are used to be big you know hard woods the maple right. and oak that they get that that it's that year after year cycle so one year not bad but if you see them you know the second or third year it's in trouble you're in trouble and um, they do have the ability to especially when it's coupled with the drought to, mm -hmm. to kill the trees so and we had a really good start to the spring as far as precipitation went but we've kind of declined Blinded, recently yeah. over the past few weeks and so years ago and I can remember my kids were young um, we had spraying for gypsy moths mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we can't spray anymore we haven't uh, approached no that no was the state yeah mm -hmm. no statewide effort or anything has been done even with this recent outbreak you know over the past few years and in, in the larger central mass region I think I'm not exactly sure what they use, but I think we're just more cognizant these right. days of the other side effects and impacts mm -hmm. of what those pesticides. That mass yeah. spraying of pesticides does to bees and mm. other pollinators and things like that. I don't know if that's the reason why we're not doing anything, but I would it guess probably it probably is. is a big yeah. part of it. I'm yeah. noticing a lot of houses in town have the wood going up, yep. and I guess that's a barrier. I remember the tinfoil back the tin in the foil, day. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of my neighbors have the tinfoil. Yeah, up. if you can get, I mean, it seems pretty effective if you can get that up before they start to crawl up the tree. But, you know, the other challenge you have is, you know, the leaf to leaf, tree to tree. You can't mm -hmm. get them all. No, so. no. Oh, my, yeah. we totally defoliated the tree in the front of my yep. house. Oh, really? And oh. in the back, there's several uh, oak trees yep. that have been defoliated. My husband found them on some shrubs and he was able to spray because you can reach the shrubs, right. but you can't you reach can't the oak, oak wow. trees to do anything about it. Yeah. Um, he thought he treated the tree in the front um, last fall, 
and yeah. it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. There's not a leaf on that tree. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. It is amazing. And you what can't can use your deck yeah. and all yeah. the evil. all the caterpillar turds. Yeah. It's like you can't go anywhere. Yeah without you know so you, you you're running from it like it's winter time yeah, exactly i didn't realize how devastatingly uh, for lack of a better term evil they were i was yeah. down um used to think they were cute little cats yeah they were like i was like why is everybody worried about fuzzy until yeah. i got the rash <laughs> up my arm no <laughs> i was kind of weirder i was at um scissors down uh on route nine and the girl said you got something on your pant and it was a caterpillar mm -hmm. and i didn't realize they had such claws it took like three of us to try to pull it off, and it still was alive. And I'm like, okay, now I don't like these things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're um, they. I, I had the rash up my arm, and I oh. looked at the uh, poison control site, and it said to use tape and put tape off. and pull off the little, because there's all little spines they call them, and that was in my arm, and it was up my arm, and. Um, it really made a difference. It took a lot of the itch really? away. Well, yeah, that's good to know. Along with the Benadryl, but um, <laughs> so that was just a nice little PSA you just yeah, did to I teach know, us all. To tell that's people. awesome. But I used duct tape, and boy, yeah. I was using it that morning everywhere. And yeah. um, it you were was looking a little crazy. I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, I, I just can't stand looking at them. I, I'm out there with the snow shovel, <laughs> trying to get them Kill off them the all, house. Yeah. So this is added to my new list of why they exist, yeah. which starts with ticks. Mm -hmm. Why do they exist? Well, you know the story about the gypsy moths, right? It was uh, supposed to be a cheap silk oh, generator, yeah, and right. the guy brought them over from China mm -hmm. into Framingham or something. So we have, have that city resident. Yeah. To thank for this, yeah. we need to surround Shrewsbury. <laughs> so protect we, us. We worry about the beetles, right? Right. right. And then oh, the we get the gypsy moths. Right. Yeah, right. So, but we're still monitoring the beetles, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we're still yeah. monitoring them. Um, we met with the USDA and um, Mass Forestry, I think it is, uh, earlier this spring, and they're doing their routine testing and flagging of trees and they use the pink ribbons on the trees so, mm -hmm. so occasionally we have folks call in and say right. why is my you know a tree flagged does that mean i have asian longhorn beetles and for now the answer is no it just means that we've checked it uh more the usda has checked it and um, everything seems to be going really well with that program though so they seem to be on the decline yeah um, Moving in the right so they're direction. going down, but the gypsies yeah. are going up. Yeah. So yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we're we're balancing. Yep. You know, yeah. at least we got something. I know people that canceled parties. They planned, you know, really? outdoor party, wow. and they couldn't have it because the yard yeah. was. One a of the mess. things that um, struck me the most with the gypsy moth damage that we had out in, in our area was the like the the light flicker and the difference in the summertime, right? So you're you're oh, used to a tree right. canopy shade. in your yeah. yard or, or shade, or you're driving down the street, and it looks like fall because it's the you know, the flicker right. that you get from mm -hmm. vacant or uh, leafless trees. Right. Uh, I thought that was striking. It's kind of yeah. haunted, too. Mm -hmm. they're, they're ready for Halloween too early. I'm getting creeped out oh, now. Yeah. I ain't going to go hide in my house. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess if these are the worst problems that we yeah. have in while the we're, moment for the moment. <laughs> while we're on nature, um, the lake. I'm oh. hearing that the Worcester side has patrol boats now mm -hmm. um, because... For a few years, Worcester really wasn't doing their piece with the patrol. Right. So, yeah. So, the towns, the Grafton and Worcester has stepped up more recently. So, the legislation, Representative Kane led some, uh, with Senator Moore, led some uh, legislative changes that um, um, really provided a, a mechanism for towns to, I'll call it legally fund. You know, we had always supported Lake Quinsigamon, but, the, you know, this is a legal mechanism for that group to actually receive the funding. Mm -hmm. So that got Grafton to contribute funding like Shrewsbury. And yes, Worcester has stepped up and um, is um, supporting uh, Shrewsbury and our patrol efforts and the environmental police efforts, which is really good because obviously they have um, sized resources to their community that makes sense. And it's a big asset and a big help to us to know that we're not the sole first responders or uh, individuals out there patrolling the lake. So that is good. Yeah. Which made me think of the people that live along the lake. You know, mm -hmm. we have the Lake Quinsigamon Commission, mm -hmm. and there, there are there residents on that commission. Do you know? There are. There are residents from each and every municipality. And I know I have some friends that seem to be active as it relates to lake activity. But what I never thought about, and I didn't discuss with them. I never thought of it till recently, when you want to go outside your own house and swim off your wharf that you pay taxes mm -hmm. for. Yeah. which blows my a mind fee. too right. yeah, yeah. 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 that um, 
they have to be careful because there's so many boats. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a busy lake. Yeah, it's getting, yeah. So what can those people do to make it safer for their swimming in front of their houses? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a good question. Obviously, there's the designated swimming areas, the regatta point and everything right. like that, that that are a little safer. But um, I don't know the best answer, but I mean, my suggestion would be some type of buoys or can they do or that? signalization. I guess we can look into that yeah. and try to follow up at a future, uh, uh, ask the manager or something to yeah. let folks know. But yeah, you certainly do have to be, be cognizant of it. We actually had years ago, I don't know if it was the 60s or the 70s, someone um, rowing mm -hmm. in a shell, yep. whatever you call them, um, and he got hit by a water skier. Oh. It was a terrible freak accident, but it was, you know, a busy place. Here's the, you know, man quietly rowing, mm. and along comes the water skier, and he couldn't get out of the guy's way, mm. you know, fast enough. It was a terrible accident. Mm. And I thought, well, what about the swimmers, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's something to think about. I agree. Mm. I agree. I mean, I never go down to the lake because it does seem so busy. Mm. So that would be actually an interesting mm. thing to find out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on nature, mm -hmm. let's go to my absolutely favorite topic, marijuana. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Today was the day. Um, I mean, I, I, I'll be brutally honest, I did not vote for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I have a degree in substance abuse. I've done it for 14 years. I've done it myself. Mm. Um, my concern would be how is it going to affect the town? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the, the, if I can try to lay this out, so I think the perils that come with marijuana the abuse and the challenges and things like that um, are um, challenged and maybe enhanced a little bit uh, by retail, uh, you know, sales being in the community. But you know, I don't think that the allowance of retail sales by the community is, you know, its gateway into the community because it's it's already here in some ways, legal or illegal. It's further here because it is legal and you can grow it and then, you know, surrounding communities will have it. You can get it as an adult. Um, we've had a lot of interest uh, from companies since April. Really? Wow. I, uh, you know, I want to say that the assistant manager and I uh, have met with or had phone conversations with more than 10 businesses wow. since since that time. Um, and uh, we actually have had two larger group settings with a whole cadre of department heads, you know, development team, police, fire, et cetera, planning um, to meet with two uh, companies that we've actually been speaking with since way back in January. And we politely asked them and they uh, agreed to said, let the community make the decision, you know, about what they want to do, you know, retail uh, adult sales or not, mm -hmm. and then come back to us and, you know, you, you know, we'll put you on this list. So we've had some more enhanced conversations. So there are many businesses of many varieties within the industry, uh, not just retailers that are interested to come to the community. What so, does that mean? So very interesting things. I think if you look at it from a, from an emergence, emerging market and emerging industry. So we've had conversations with software companies that specialize in product testing and analysis to ensure that, um, I'll just use the proverbial brownie has the right um, dose. content, dose, exactly. Uh, or that the plants that you're growing um, are being grown within you know, specifications and mm. don't have chemicals within them, things like that. Then we've also had very interesting conversations uh, with uh, cultivators who are creating clones from mm -hmm. genotypes and phenotypes. There's some, you know, words that I hadn't heard in a while <laughs> since high school bio or whatever it was, that um, are trying to get patents and, you know, lay claim to a specific type of dwarf plant or something or else that they would then sell to other cultivating facilities. Like the prize roses, only it's prize Yeah, marijuana. exactly, yeah, because it's, it, it you know, it has this characteristic or that characteristic. They're giving or, them names, yeah. too? Yeah, I'm sure that they, I bet I'm they sure do. that they I are. I don't think you're naming it after your grandmother like we did the roses, though. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah, so, yeah, so we've actually, um, so, you know, the cultivators, and we've had the, you know, product manufacturers, um, we've had one company that came in that says they want to make it kind of like an experience where, you know, they'd manufacture and through with glass windows, you could see the, the products being made. 
in the commercial kitchen. So, you know, you could go in and, and buy like the products. Heaper? Yeah, something, yeah. Yep. Oh, the breweries. Yeah. 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 So an experience Maybe like that. Maybe they'll have food, so too. It's, it's just interesting from the standpoint because when, you know, when's <laughs> the last time a new market, a new something or else came right. into the legal um, marketplace? And, and you're seeing all these entrepreneurs and, and individuals with very, you know, skilled careers otherwise or emerging mm -hmm. into a, a software field or a testing field that are entering this industry. Are they interested in the Allen property? <laughs> Actually, yes. We've had over we've we've had a number, which is good for competition, right? We've yeah. had at least three uh, companies that have reached out either directly to the town or to our broker that said they'd be interested in the Allen property. That's great. Yeah, that part so, is great. Yeah, so. you know, see, yeah. and they say get it on the ground floor. Yeah, that's that's what these folks seem to be doing. So it, it's a challenge for us from a staffing standpoint. And what everybody has to remember, it it's legal. It is. Yeah. Whether yeah. we want it exactly. or we don't want it, yeah. it's yeah. legal. So yeah. you have to start with it's legal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, how did you vote? P obviously, exactly. somebody voted for it. Right. Yeah. And it was the majority, so mm -hmm. it's legal. Mm -hmm. So if we get in on the ground floor, maybe mm -hmm. the town will have greater benefits than yep. anything we could have thought of. So what's going to happen next, probably, in that? Um, Pretty soon, Prime Wellness, who is the company that has the registered marijuana dispensary at 235 Hartford Turnpike, uh, will um, be coming before the Board of Selectmen for a host community agreement for adult retail sales. Um, and then at, at some point in time, we'll figure out. It's, so it's going to be kind of a competitive process because then there's <laughs> only going to be one retail license left. So we have to. How can we benefit? We have to lay the groundwork, I think, to be fair to everyone first, mm -hmm. and that's what we're working on with the board. And then it's through that host community agreement that we set up, you know, the additional benefits to the to the community. So we'll have the three percent sales tax. Uh, we'll make sure that they have good, solid financial security mm -hmm. plans, all those things through that process. One thing that I'm really learning, and you, we've, I thought I learned a lot in November and December and January, but then you get to the next phase and you start to think about things differently. So whenever we went through the registered marijuana dispensary, so the, the marijuana part, the state had uh, the lead role. Mm -hmm. So they went through this, the applicants went through this thorough state process before they were allowed to talk to us as a municipality. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in my opinion, uh, the adult use is just the opposite. They have to have a host community agreement before they can move okay. into the licensing phase with the mm -hmm. state, which puts, which puts municipalities at a different disadvantage because the state does this very thorough security financial vetting process mm -hmm. with the applicants that we're missing out on. We have to kind of put our line in the sand and say yes or no before they go through that vetting process, which means... Um, you know, we, we just don't have the resources to put and the capability to put that type of review in place. It was just nice to have that information at your fingertips and know that they went through the state process. So will the state provide that information? They ultimately will. I guess you could say it's, it's more of a fail safe. But, you know, me as a town manager never want to put the Board of Selectmen or the community mm -hmm. in a position where, well, you gave a light. You said it was okay mm -hmm. for this company to come right. into town. And here, you there know, Bonnie Bulger yeah. was actually running the show, <laughs> you know. So... <laughs> It's, uh, you know, yeah. you, you just don't want to be in that situation. And I think the state prevents us from that ultimately mm -hmm. coming to the marketplace, but we have to make a decision before that point. And whereas I personally, you know, my personal feelings are different than what the town voted for, but I know my father um, and my mother, when this came up, were in California and went to a dispensary mm -hmm. to see what it was like. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody wants blackmail pictures of Kevin Fern? <laughs> I have him looking at marijuana uh, with his wife. Um, and it was, he was very interested in, it was very clean, very yeah. sanitary. Everybody says that. Yeah. Um, and it's, I guess my fear is I get the clean, sanitary, you know, you've got really good customer service from what I understand. But then how, you know, it's like when tattoos finally became legal in Massachusetts in what 2000 mm -hmm. all these little yeah. horrible ones popped up mm -hmm. with the really good ones mm -hmm. and I think that becomes a fear but with mm -hmm. only a certain number of licenses mm -hmm. we can stop that from mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. the so. key is the control right yeah, the key is the control exactly. yeah 
So on, you know, but you know, state on a statewide basis, I think we did it right. We limited the number of licenses, right. but that's not a requirement. You know, some some communities may not do that. You know, mm -hmm. they may not limit, so you may have more of a you know a disparity in the types of businesses that are being operated there. Um, but the good news is. We start with two, right. we can keep it at two, mm -hmm. or we can change our mind and add more mm -hmm. right. if we want to. Mm -hmm. right. It's not that we can't, and mm -hmm. it's not right. that we have to. Mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. we can at least learn along the way without making big mistakes. Mm -hmm. or, or we can ban it. You right. can always have the opportunity to go back at oh. any point in the future. If it's not working. It'd have to go through the whole ballot right. and the, the whole election process, process and all that, the bigger right. process. But, but it could be done. Yeah, it could be done, of course. Well, I think the advantage we have with this whole process, either pro or con, it has been so publicized. You know, town meetings are, are on you know TV. We have these venues. We have the newspapers. The concern sometimes is the neighbors or you know the senior citizens who mm -hmm. don't understand or the the you know young families mm -hmm. so this is all out there and the information is out there mm -hmm. um, and that's a plus mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know and just keeping I think part of my personal issues when I saw it happening I lived in California for many years mm -hmm. and when you have your neighbor come to you and say hey you want a medical marijuana card I'll get you one for free right, right. you kind of go okay this isn't you know this isn't working um, if it's regulated and it's safe mm -hmm. and we keep throwing those words out and then the police uh, police departments are educated and we have an amazing police department mm -hmm. I see them every day when I drive down st. John's Hill mm -hmm. with all the construction mm -hmm. um, but you know them being educated and them not being overtaxed too mm -hmm. with any issues that might come up and issues always come up in the beginning mm -hmm. you know I don't want somebody getting you know, always calling 911 over the young kids who are, you know, smoking a joint or going into the store and you think they're under 18. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. but I think that's the learning process of the town. Mm -hmm. And I also think it'd be nice if, and easier mm -hmm. if we knew, like the breathalyzer right. test, if there was a simple yeah. test that could be administered. Mm -hmm. And if we ever invented it, boy, would we be in mm -hmm. a good position, but we have, and mm -hmm. we'll watch someone else invent it. Mm -hmm. Right? So I should have thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> right. You know, we need it. We know it's a need, mm -hmm. but who's still? Somebody must be working mm -hmm. on it. Right. And, and and as a drug and, and alcohol person, I understand that actually marijuana is better regulated. Mm -hmm. um, pick up the newspaper. You know, you've got marijuana laced with everything, opiates laced with everything. At least on the good side, this is we know what's in this. It's market. the ingredients. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. that you have the. The little ingredients label that says this is what's in it, this is what brand, this is who packed it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the opioids have hit Shrewsbury mm -hmm. like every other town. So, you know, yeah, we're working on that. Mm -hmm. Is there any, I haven't seen anything lately about the opioid problem in Shrewsbury. How mm -hmm. are we doing? Yeah, I mean, I think we still, you know, we still have our challenges right. and our calls and we're responding to them. And, you know, fortunately, they haven't had any, you know, deaths or overdoses recently, which is a, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, <laughs> knock on know, everything. So, yep. you know, we have seen some declines, in, you know, statewide, mm -hmm. but a long way to go. Right. Yeah. S while we're on police, um, any discussions or any further planning on the police station? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, I mean, we, yeah. we fully intend to... Um, remain silent on the issue until we get Beal <laughs> well on the way. <laughs> yeah. But. But, yeah, absolutely. That's that's next on the list. And actually, um, from the last few board meetings, uh, the so I set some goals at the last few board meetings. Uh, you know, I published them, work with the board, and they're available on the town manager's website, what I plan to take on this mm -hmm. coming year, this coming fiscal year. Um, and one of the things that I initially had on my list was the police station starting the planning for it. And the board said, well, you know, let's look at a municipal campus. You know, should, you know, I'm not saying that we need to redo every building, you know, the town hall, the police station and the senior center, but we know there's, you know, challenges at the senior center. Um, you know, school staff, town staff are crammed within the town hall. You know, if it's an opportunity to plan and, and be ready and if nothing mm -hmm. else, know what comes after the police station or what we can partner with the police station we should do that so that's something we're going to look at the 
the campus, so to speak, um, and, and see. But the police station will be the focus. It's, you know. It'll be a priority. Yeah, it'll be a priority with, you know, it's, it's probably going to be, the, well, it will be the only new building out of any of those three. But, you know, if there's tweaks and changes mm -hmm. and improvements that we can make um, through an economy of scale and efficiency of having a contractor on site and putting out a single bid and things like that, we're going to see if, if that makes sense. If it doesn't. Looking at the big picture. Yeah. yeah. But none of that would hurt the planning of the police station. No. It would just be that there's a plan with a timeline yep. and mm -hmm. won't interfere with moving forward with what needs to be done for the police station. That's right, yeah. yeah. That I mean, police station is 60s, late 60s, early 70s? Yeah, and very small. It's yeah. extremely small. I mean, if, if you go inside, you think it's going to be this elaborate yeah. building, mm -hmm. and it really isn't. When you walk in, everything's crowded and, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's funny. Um, Detective Foucher came into my office this afternoon because we had a meeting at 4 o'clock. And he said, well, you know, he's so pleased because we're, we're getting air conditioner, air conditioning in the, uh, in the locker room. It's <laughs> like, I mean, they don't even have that, you know. Wow. So uh, we're putting mini ducts, you know, mini splits in. So we're not making a massive investment because we know in the future that, you know, it will be. But, I mean, it has to be comfortable enough for them to be prepared for their shifts and right. change after their shifts and stuff. So we, you know, we are putting those in to make it a little more comfortable in the building. And, because it'll, it'll be a few years, yeah. You know, until until we get anything underway. So that's good. Yeah. And then you touched upon the senior center. Mm -hmm. Is that? Do you think that the senior center will need to be enlarged? Or I mean, do you, I mean, not just renovated, but. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's the request that you know I've heard from some members on the council on aging. But honestly, I, I think the best position is that I have is I don't know. I think we, you know. They feel that they need different space, new space, a little more space, but I think we should go through the process and see if it is. It was built in the late 90s, mm -hmm. early 2000s, so unfortunately for all of us, that was 20 years ago, right? Amazing. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. And do you know, when that was being thought of, mm -hmm. it was a big, I mean, all we had were volunteers delivering yeah. food. Mm -hmm. And um, I can remember saying to Mr. Carney, Look, the worst that can happen is nobody goes to the senior mm -hmm. center and you use it as an extension of town hall. Mm -hmm. And it was like, that kind of took the pressure off. Mm -hmm. And then the doors opened and it's never been empty. Yeah. Yeah. It's a busy place. If you ever, well, what you have, yeah. walk in. Oh, I was there, yeah. If you walk in in the daytime, busy. you can tell. It's busy, you can mm -hmm. feel it, you can mm -hmm. feel it's crowded. I was, mm -hmm. I was in Wednesday morning for a meeting and... I looked and every room was full, literally. Yeah. Every seat at every table and, you know, the common area. Um, and I think, w which would happen, I'm sure, that if you go to other senior centers, you mm -hmm. know, the newer, bigger mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. um, you get all kinds of ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, when I wanted to look into health insurance after retirement mm -hmm. uh, at 65, mm -hmm. uh, I went to the one in Worcester mm -hmm. and I just couldn't believe the yeah. people that were there and what was happening in all the different rooms. Mm -hmm. And it was much larger than ours, and it's the city of Worcester. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they want to enlarge mm -hmm. theirs, but mm -hmm. I just was so impressed with mm -hmm. um, how much was happening. Right. At One of the things I want to make sure of if we do renovations is, is that, you know, we're doing it for the community and the health and human services. Mm -hmm. Uh, of, of all, not of all residents, I realize we need a senior center, but if there's an opportunity to provide other services and it makes sense if, as we look yeah. at that campus, you know, let's not be as, you know, not that it was narrow-minded to build it, but, you know, is there other opportunities to intermix generations and ages within well, a facility like that? I, I love that this, I mean, I've been to the senior center, obviously we vote there, mm -hmm. um, so we go up there. And I think at one point, was it a year ago, two years ago, our neighborhood got evacuated, and that's where Dan sent us all. Mm -hmm. So we, we get to see that, but it's it's nice to see not so much a senior center, but like a, almost mm -hmm. a community center. Mm -hmm. So I kind of agree mm -hmm. with you. I love going up there, and I think we're also getting to a point in culture that we're not going the nursing home route anymore. Mm -hmm. And so having facilities like the senior center mm -hmm. where they can go up and have lunch or take mm -hmm. a class or I think they even asked me if I wanted to learn to knit and I said, have you met me? I don't <laughs> want to do this. Um, 
but even like I think they've re uh, books there and computers mm -hmm. and yeah, TVs and yeah. having you know community events there would be in mm -hmm. services are provided in right. those little yep. yes. small areas. Yeah. There's so many services mm -hmm. provided, whether it's help with fuel assistance or right, right down the line. Mm -hmm. There's people there to yes. help, and um, they just need a space to be able right. to do their job. And, and I know the VSO is in there yep, too. Yeah, that is. Yeah, veteran know? services. Right, yep. and that's I know when I went up there at one point uh, in my career, it's like kind of hidden behind the desk. Yep. And, you know, it, personally, I would like it to be a little bit more upfront. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I mean, I really didn't pay attention. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, redoing or renovating mm -hmm. or whatever we're saying. Mm -hmm probably not a bad idea so uh, you know part of the organizational overall organizational changes or, or thoughts about the future is trying to align mm -hmm. some of those so right. I, I think you know as these new areas of municipal services have come up through the years mm -hmm. they've been really stovepipe but you know as it relates to the library and the senior center and veterans and public health you know I see those um, being intertwined and and mm -hmm. providing a better service if they're all talking to each other and, and working together. So it's certainly something that, you know, th that entire, what will be health and human services, maybe at one day will all fall directly to the assistant town manager. Mm -hmm. So she'll have direct supervision and leadership over those groups um, to kind of, you know, right. make sure that there's more focus and more collaboration and more communications among those, mm -hmm. among those groups. So we're excited to see how that starts to play out in the, in the coming months. And you talk about um, the assistant town manager doing that. Mm -hmm. You also have a bigger plan for reorganization mm -hmm. and um, how is that going? It's going really well. It's, it makes our summer busier than probably <laughs> we wanted it to be. But um, So at the Board of Selectmen's meeting this coming Tuesday, which will be June 26th, um, uh, we're going to make a presentation to the board, a formal presentation uh, to create a Department of Public Works. So we'll take some initial steps. Uh, John Knipe, uh, Highway Superintendent, is retiring uh, in early August. Wow. So there's a couple things that we have to do to be prepared for that. So um, his retirement is kind of key. It gives us, you know, uh, uh, the ability to uh, rethink the way we, we operate mm -hmm. uh, highway department and uh, the public works department, which will be coming. Will you have him provide input? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah he's provided input the, the whole time uh, about uh, how we're going to, to do things in the future. And he's still here and, you know, you know met with John earlier this week on a number of things. Um, but, you know, so we have to kind of back up. If we're going to have a new department, I want to have the department head in place. And then, you know, we'll have a division manager for highway. And so we've got to get that advertised. And all those things just, um, you know, take time. So, yeah, we're working on those things throughout the course of the summer. And it really will take us into um, the early winter before, you know, Bob uh, Cox will be retiring. So that gives us another opportunity. So we're, we're going to um, take the opportunity to not have a personal impact on anyone, but really um, change up the organization through those opportunities. So we're going to be we're, we're going to do things different, and hopefully, it's along the lines right. of just coordinating those like um, functional areas a little better. So a lot of work, but in the end, it will make for a more efficient system. Yeah, it it should. I mean, one of the one of the things that you know we think about and talk about a lot is that. You know, as development occurs and things are occurring within the community, we used to just expand, but the desirability hasn't changed, but the complexity of everything that we have to do to accommodate new people and more people and just the number of people that we have right now makes everything so much more complex. So if we're not thinking six months, eight months, 36 months out in advance, uh, we're not doing our job. So th this will give us the opportunity to make sure we're, again, not just working in all these little silos, right. but we're coordinating uh, our efforts better and, and well, planning. Well, your office alone is overcrowded. It yeah. is, yep, yep. Your suite, I should yep. say. Yeah. And if you just envision what's happening in Town mm -hmm. Hall, it feels good right. when you walk in, but if you actually focus in mm -hmm. on who's doing what where, right. mm -hmm. Town Hall could use more space. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But police station first. And then, oh, yeah. But oh, the big picture. You know, yep. the big picture. Look at the big picture. But yeah. while you were speaking, I, it just put me back to I, I, the, the last big controversy that I was actually for was the, sh the library. Mm -hmm. And it was, 
you know, very smart people saying, we need to do this, mm -hmm. and this is what we're going to do. And honestly, I'm in there every Saturday at 9 o'clock because I'm back in school for, like, the umpteenth time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's there's so many services. Mm -hmm. When I was there in April, there were people in there ha learning how to do taxes and doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. So those kind of group spaces mm -hmm. are amazing. And if we can do that at the senior center. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's that work smarter, not harder mm -hmm. type theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I love walking into the Shrewsbury Library, but I loved it back in 1963. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Um, I'm just one of those people. but. I think that project maybe set the tone mm -hmm. in a way. I mean, she's got a cafe. They have a cafe in there. Mm -hmm. They have quiet rooms. But it's all these different pieces that fit together, mm -hmm. but they all serve the same purpose. So mm -hmm. I think that would be great because mm -hmm. I love walking into town hall, mm -hmm. but it's been exactly the <laughs> same. I know exactly where Sandra Wright's office is. Mm -hmm. I know where your mm -hmm. office is. Mm -hmm. You go down the end of the hall to Selco. Mm -hmm. Um, might, might need, they, you know, give mm -hmm. them something. So was the first edition. Yep. 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 That's a great edition, too. Yeah. Great edition. Yep. But I just love Selco, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I will never leave Shrewsbury because of Selco. And my whole family <laughs> says that. <laughs> really? That's, oh, absolutely. That's a compliment. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, if you have your power out for longer than an hour, it's something wrong. Mm -hmm. I know. We are spoiled when it comes to yeah, that. Absolutely. Oh, we're spoiled rotten. Yeah. Rotten. It's great. Stay that way. Yes. Um, Pax, it's summertime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually everybody's battling for fields. Do you hear a lot of that frustration still? Yeah, I know. I think uh, field space is still at a premium. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't hear a lot about it, but that's not, that's because we have a fantastic uh, department head, Angela Snell, so, and, and her team, um, <clears throat> you know, Gary Grindle and uh, Kevin Esposito and everyone that's managing things over there are doing a really good job. But yeah, we're challenged by park and recreational space. So we're thinking about that with the Beal, you know, project. How can we use that to help? How can we continue to partner with Shrewsbury Youth Soccer Association mm -hmm. for those? Uh, what's going on with the UMass land behind the town hall for the municipal campus for recreation by the Maple mm -hmm. Ave field? So we are we are thinking about all those things. And what about um, the land on Lake Street? SAC? Oh, SAC, yeah. Yep. yeah. I mean, it's there. It's there, yeah. We've heard what a number of times it's going to sell. Is it, you know, it, it's it's there and available. We, you know, we can partner with them or hopefully um, keep the a recreational facility into the future. So, yeah. yeah. Somebody mentioned to me um, they wanted to know why the fountains at Dean Park yep. were not working immediately. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, an instant gratification yeah, town. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, it could just be a little early in the season. Um, you know, those were generously donated by the Donahue family, mm -hmm. and um, they will be up and running. Um, I don't know the exact date, but I'll put it on my list. How about that? All right. He will be very happy. Okay, mm. good. <laughs> um, construction everywhere. Yes. There's no way one. to sneak around construction mm -hmm. yeah. without landing at orange barrel somewhere else yeah um, but that's a good thing officer. yeah yep. that's a good thing um, yep. it's good for the it shows us that the economy is mm -hmm. uh, doing okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the projects are going forward yep. um, luckily route 9 this is the last summer for that you know this is the top coat and you know it'll be open back up for this phase mm -hmm. um, unfortunately for Main Street it's year one of two Mm -hmm. So uh, they're doing the drainage work now, and we won't get into final paving and anything until next year. Uh, but that's a big project, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, much needed. And I hate to say it, but we'll be on to something, <laughs> something else after that. So if you look at <laughs> Lake Street, Lake Street uh, near the credit union, mm -hmm. that road had all the construction, but they never did the final paving. Is that scheduled? Lake Street, like where we put the water line and all that stuff right. in. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. That's when's that going to happen? Scheduled. I think it's on this year's list. So we yeah. have about a million dollars in town resurfacing projects, nine hundred and thirty. I think it is, yeah. but I, I chapter nine. There's just so much traffic on that yeah. road. That yeah. used to be oh. a quiet street. That mm -hmm. was a cute little shortcut, yep. and now, yes. I mean, it's a busy area. Mm -hmm. um, the whole town has become yeah. busy, which is good and bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've been asked about Francis Ave being 
resurface. That is definitely this year. Yeah. That's so this we're, year well, too. Well, we're going to do the water main project in it this year, whether we get to, to pave it all or not. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not certain. That probably will fall till mostly to next year. But it's it's on the it is horizon. on the list. Yeah, we've got to finish the water line in there. Okay. Um, so Route 20, Market Basket, oh. all the wheelings and dealings yeah. with. Yep. Um, what needs to take place before the construction begins? Yep. Where where is that we at? We made a lot of progress. We we uh, move forward as a community with some some work that we had planned to do on on the um, Route 20 sewer and the Lake Street pump station. So mm -hmm. that um, has uh, been very um, favorably looked upon by the developer, and. Um, Actually, on Monday, we have a another meeting with that developer to hopefully, we, we could be nearing a memorandum of agreement or understanding about who's going to do what. We continue to work with them um, towards the submission of a MassWorks grant, which is due in early August for um, the Lake Street Route 20 intersection improvements. So we look to partner with them, public-private nice. partnership, to get some state dollars, get some private dollars, and um, work together. Um, for the improvement of that intersection because it would be um, challenged mm -hmm. by a new uh, commercial and residential development there. So it's, it's still very much interested, ongoing. It's taken longer, but yeah. like I said, the town's moving in the, the right direction and the developer's doing some design work for that. I know there are people that are very interested in that intersection being improved mm -hmm. because if you're headed east and you want to go left onto Lake Street, um, <laughs> There's no turning lane, no turn, right. and so you don't know if that tractor yeah. trailer in your rear view mirror is going to mm -hmm. right. slow down, mm -hmm. move over, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, yeah. there's got to be a way, and I, I can't imagine an engineer looking at that intersection and not looking at that as something that needs to be done. Um, we, you touched upon the library. School's huh. out to you today. Today. Is it really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, oh, uh, is so there no more buses, no offense, right. no more buses, <laughs> no. no more stopping every 10 feet. Awesome. No. Right. Awesome. So, is there a plan? Do they, do the librarians have a plan for um, all the kids that might be mm -hmm. congregating? So, first and foremost, become a social center? You know, we've hired a new children's librarian. Mm -hmm. So, she's in um, from the island destination of Oak, Oak Bluffs. So we're very, oh, we're very wow. ha happy to island have her lady. on board. <laughs> um, and um, She might want to go back. Yeah, after. so we did add the additional position through the wow. leadership of the Finance Committee and urging. So we, 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 we brought on the, the additional full-time mm -hmm. um, librarian position to kind of help manage uh, the influx of students. So I think we are taking the uh, right steps. Summer reading program, especially for the little ones, is, mm -hmm. is coming up, and we're gearing up for those things. So, yeah, we're, we're trying. How are we doing on Beal? I know it's a hot point in mm -hmm. this town right now. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm going to admit with school and everything, all you hear is Beal, Beal, Beal. Yep. How are we doing on that? We're, we're doing very well. <laughs> I, first and Open foremost, ended. I have to say that I was at an MSBA uh, facility subcommittee meeting in Boston a couple weeks ago and Dr. Sawyer uh, and I'm sure it's Dr. Clowder, Amy Clowder, who wrote um, the educational plan for the Bill School were praised like the, no one else has ever been praised by the educational plan that they put in place. So kudos to them, kudos to their team. Um, they, um, the representative from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education said that it was the best example of, um, of an uh, educational plan for the school um, and project-based learning that he's ever read. So we, we know our kids are in good hands, obviously, That's from that standpoint. Know. But the project itself is moving forward. We got very favorable reviews on the physical aspects mm -hmm. of the project as well. Um, we'll get final approval of the um, initial uh, recommended site um, this coming Wednesday from the MSBA and we're already off into schematic design which will take us to 25 percent design um, so we'll be coming to the community this fall for a borrowing authorization and a debt exclusion uh, for that project which means you know uh, if, if those milestones are achieved that um, you know, project construction could start, you know, about a year from then, you know, and we'd be looking at the 2021 20, school year, maybe. 
Wow. So yeah. it'll be here before we know it. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So wow. big, you know, big school, um, but good MSBA participation and helping sharing in the cost. But it's a it's a big number as well. So you know, yeah. it's a great school. I mean, yeah. my brother went there. And he's in upstate New York right now, mm -hmm. and he drives by there every day and remembers mm -hmm. really? all the people. He mm -hmm. knows every teacher. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but it's amazing. A, it's a, I mean, I'm not a product of a product of most Shrewsbury schools, but the Shrewsbury schools I did go to were amazing. Mm -hmm. and we need to keep it up. Mm -hmm. We need to keep it up. Go ahead. I, I'm just curious. I'm, and again, I'm being naive. What's going on with the Glavin Center? So the Glavin Center is the home of the New Beale School, or will okay. be the home of the New Beale School, hopefully. I, I uh, haven't heard <laughs> the words mentioned, yeah, so yeah. I just wanted to get them out there. So uh, <laughs> Representative Kane has done a lot of work over the, the past few months in, in shepherding the special legislation through the House, and it's engrossed in the House, through the House, and on to the Senate. So we'll get that pushed forward. We actually um, have very high expectations under their leadership that it will be signed by the governor uh, before uh, the end of the legislative session by the deadline in August. So that will line up nicely um, and give the MSBA the confidence that we have to help us build the school where we want to build the school. So we're, we're doing some significant design work on that site over the summer. It's exciting. Yeah. I, that's a great location too. Yeah, mm -hmm. great I think location. So. Amazing views and uh, yeah. perfect for a school. I mean, when the when the li when the temporary library was up there, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the community finally got to go into those buildings mm -hmm. and look at that view. Mm -hmm. Because when it was the Glavin Center, we it wasn't really yep. a community center. Right, right. It wasn't uh, open to the community. No, no. I did my one of my internships up there, so mm -hmm. I knew those wow. hallways. But that's a great site, and it's it's wasted, mm -hmm. and it needs to be mm -hmm. used. Hopefully soon. And yeah. so, what's happening with the turf fields? Mm -hmm. So the turf fields are under construction at both <laughs> locations, St. John's and at that's uh, the exciting. high school. Yes, that's huge. So is we'll it go the same company? Zero to th well, actually, the the turf company. Yes, it is the it is the same installer and everything. So um, very exciting. So we'll go from zero to three in one summer, which will give good recreational opportunities on that type of field, which will help with you know our other uh, green fields and give them a rest and everything when they need to be. So. Yep, that, those, those projects are certainly moving forward as well. And well, what's nice is that it validates knowing that both schools came to the same decision as far as what to put down mm -hmm. for turf. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, and it's been a very fast hour. Thank you for being I, our guest. I we didn't even get to talk about pizza boxes <laughs> and recycling. <laughs> so we'll that, have to do that, that another time. That was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks oh. for watching. We'll see you next time.